All right, we have just returned from the Arizona D-Bags race at Indy Motorsports Ranch in Wilcox, Arizona. Now, this is a great facility. Yep. It's a country club, members only type place. There's a airplane collection on the grounds. People and, are landing their planes on the front stretch. And yet they let us in. Go figure. And uh, so, but one of the things that was a minor downside was that the timing system didn't work at all. And our yeah. timing guru, Roland, who was always on top of it, yeah. uh, you know, first it was, well, maybe it's the lake effect or the extra static electricity or the new decoder, or, you know, the, the old decoder that they sent, it has the wrong codec from the factory in it. <laughs> so this went on for some time. Pretty much all day. And then eventually somebody from the track said, you know what might be related was the time we pulled out that wire in the <laughs> with the back pole, and then we glued it back in. Do you think that might have something to do with it? So Roland and Jeff showed up early on Saturday morning and installed our backup loop because we're no dummies. Yeah. We travel with an entire system for just this occasion and we taped it into the ground and got it all running and working for the rest of the race. All right, there were, however, some hella sweet things at this race. And for starters, you know, usually Camaro, we don't really, we don't like to encourage Camaros, but no, this Camaro is actually pretty excellent. It's a yeah. second generation. Yeah. It's super fast. Yeah. They won the race. I mean, yeah. I, Camaros have won once or twice before, but you know, really, these are pretty terrible cars. Yeah. So they dominated, they deserved it. Six laps, totally awesome. Also, hella sweet, these dudes, I don't even know what this is about, brought this giant S-Class Mercedes. Oh, yeah. What was that thing? It's like a W140 or it's something? A, it's an S500. I think it might have gotten an award for something before, but anyway, it's awesome. It's a huge S500 yeah. coupe, and yeah. it is racing in lemons. Yep, yep, yep. Also, hella sweet, Spank did the Jeff Glenn Memorial <laughs> Meeting. <laughs> yeah. So, turns out our uh, American Cities Racing League champion from 1997, yep. Jeff Glenn, he had a mini that uh, he had done in a certain way. I don't know where Spank found these photographs that said, ah, that's it, I'm gonna make a historic Jeff Glenn replica. Yeah. Brought the car out, it ran great, and then he had Jeff uh, sign his boobs commemoratively. <laughs> You know, now that I think about it, the same year that Jeff Glenn won the American Cities Racing League Championship, 1997, it was the same year that Buster Rhymes was rapping about how he had an <laughs> S500. It's Kismet. <laughs> We had a really cool act like you're on a car reality TV show penalty. Yeah. I really like that. And we had a great squatty potty theme. I mean, that's way overdue. It is Arizona. There you go. There we go. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice steady stream. Oh. Nice steady stream oh. right there. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh, who would like some potty? Uh, I'm going to pass. Speaking of car reality TV oh, yeah. shows, uh, the folks from Counting Cars on the History Channel were there. Um, that in and of itself is a spin-off, I believe, of Pawn Stars. Uh, and it had all the indicators of a really yeah. bad reality TV experience of producers who don't know what they're doing, idiot drivers, bad yeah. car, so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. 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 And they really blew our minds by having their act together. Yeah. They had a terrible, terrible <laughs> 1977 Cadillac Seville. The over-under on how many laps it was going to complete was like four. And late in the day on Sunday, the damn thing is still driving around. And they, albeit, albeit incredibly slow. Well, yes, but, but still, that was part of their key to success because yeah. we thought, okay, the reason, one of the reasons why this yeah. thing is going to blow up one yeah. is the 77 Cadillac yeah. Seville, two reality TV stars, and they're going to be yeah. like trying to race people with it. Yeah. But no, they were like, hey man, it's a, it's a long race. We got to, we got to be prudent about this stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you sure you're on reality TV? <laughs> anyway, really cool dudes. Yeah, producers were cool. Yep. It was a really mind blowing experience yep. for us who are really jaded about awful needy TV people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, Phil liked it too, and that's really saying something. Right. They got the judge's choice. The special award was the least disastrous Audi award, which is really well. First of all, it's a low bar, but yeah. it's really saying something. This went to Ouchy Audi, which was a first-time team with an A4, yeah. and incredibly, it ran. Well, yeah, I mean, normally a first-time team, you know, the, the, the mid-90s, the B5 chassis A4, 
these cars are easily yeah. obtained yeah. for Lemon's money. Yeah. And first time teams often make the mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four wheel drive yeah. German yeah. sports gonna and dominate. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens is they show up and then they're covered in their mid and pale yeah. by yeah. control <laughs> arm and yeah. the yeah. things on fire. Yeah. It's just yeah. awful. Yeah. And you know, maybe by the fourth race they'll complete like ten laps. Yeah. But these guys, first time out, the things just kept running and running and running. And granted it didn't finish, but by Audi standards, it was just a yeah. really dominant it was like It was Walter Rural Trans Am 1988 <laughs> yeah. or whenever that was. Yeah. So, well done, guys. You know, speaking of Walter Rural. Yeah. Porsche. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It, they, they have a real high opinion of themselves. Uh, and, you know, some of it is warranted. Porsche, one of the most successful marks in road racing over the years. And in Lemons, let's just say when you don't have a factory team tending yeah. to all of your issues, the margin for error really starts to be a problem. Uh, let's start with the heroic fix. It was a yeah. team with a 924. Yeah. The, and it, an incredibly bad team. It. it was so bad. Very, very bad. Yeah. And uh, the Bosch fuel injection on it uh, crapped out immediately. Yeah. And they just happened to be pitted next to Spank and his <laughs> Jeff Glenn replica mini. <laughs> and, uh, hey, hey, do you know anything about cars? <laughs> and Spank said, oh, man, that's a fuel injection problem. I've got just the thing. <laughs> Digs in his bin of parts, comes out with an <laughs> SU carburetor. So they put the freaking SU carburetor onto the 924. It required a little bit of custom linkage and fabrication. And the piece de resistance, a wood adapter plate. Yeah, and man, man, it, man, it ran great. It really did. In fact, the main problem they had after the carburetor swap was the fact that they didn't tighten their lug nuts and the wheel fell off on the way to the track. <laughs> but the carburetor worked fine. Yeah. And I mean, really, wood, what can't it do? Beautiful, natural wood. Used in construction for homes, carburetor adapters, and gorgeous redwood furniture. Wood, what can't it do? This message brought to you by the Wood Council. Now, there was another Porsche team, and this team brought two 944s, and they look incredibly cheaty. Yeah. And I'm sure they were S2, blah, blah, some super cheaty-ass thing, yeah. and they were going to mop up the floor. And they were real squinty-eyed racers. Yeah. And they all sat around by their transporter and were planning, and, and man, they were just going to wipe this field up. Well, how do you think that turned out? Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir. And folks dressed up like Eskimos. So anyway, I mean, I just don't get it. I mean, look, they make great cars, right? I actually, I own a Porsche uh, because I had money left at the end of the month <laughs> yeah. in my checking account and fixed that. So, but you know, I like it and they're great cars and I don't understand why they are so incredibly terrible at lemons. I mean, really, where is the excellence? So much no excellence. You know, that's what I was expecting. <sighs> and that brings us to organizer's choice which went to Le Citron <laughs> and their Pontiac Le Mans. <laughs> I have not a whole lot to yeah. say. It's a big, huge, yellow 77 Pontiac. <laughs> What's not to like? Yep, yep, yep. And the index of affluency, the top award, went to these guys. They brought a Volvo PV544. Yeah. With so much special about that. But yeah. what's particularly special, Anton, our former multi-year yes. champion, he's been building a PV544 yeah. For like years, it's like, this is gonna be the first one in Lemons. It's gonna be so awesome. I'm gonna win Class C, B, and A. I'm gonna win IOE. I'm gonna dominate with my PV544, and I'm gonna be the first one to do it. <laughs> and then these guys, they beat them by one race. They show up with a Volvo by one race. They had been driving by this car. It was in a junkyard for 20 years. They've been driving by it for like a decade. Finally said, oh, uh, Lemons race coming up in about three weeks. Pull it. Hey, man, can I buy that Volvo from you? Hell yeah, give me five bucks. It's yours. They take it. They take it to the race. I think they blew up a gearbox. They did. You know, they got the thing back out. They basically dominated the race. So, sorry, Anton. You didn't win the IOE for bringing the first PV544. 
That's it. Here's lemons in a nutshell. So the BMW fairy gifted me all of these wonderful parts. So we shouldn't be docked anything because the BMW fairy is the one who gifted it to us. Yeah! yeah.